do you worry about that um losing losing your job is that something that like sits in you, you might i mm -hmm. i wouldn't in my business i mean other than when i was at social and i had a board of directors we're a public company mm -hmm. so technically they could fire me mm -hmm. um it's not something that i think about like mm -hmm. if i'm if i perform badly as a, an executive the company goes down yeah. <laughs> so there's no yeah, one that's going to cut, right. you know what there's I mean? No, that's right. Well, what I'd say is, I think as a young manager, I worried much more. Yeah. I think now in the in the position I'm in now and where I'm going, I, I worry far, far less because it's in my blood. I love the game. I want to be here. I'm enjoying what I'm doing. But it wouldn't be the end of the earth if, it, if something went wrong for me now at, at where I'm at. But my pride... My determination is that I want to be successful, and I want to, I want to, you know, be do a really good job for West Ham. So, but I think when you're younger, if you look now at young managers, young managers find it very difficult if you don't do well in your first job. Maybe like business, you know, in business, maybe you have a go and yeah. something fails, nothing quite works. You're you're nearly tentative to think I could go again. Maybe nobody will help invest with me, whatever it may be. So, it's so important you do get it right when you do go in. But going back to, if I just have to, because I want to mention, I think you need people who are really supportive at the start. I had, had a great owner at Preston North End, a couple of great owners who really supported me. Uh, when I went to West Ham, I had great men who, who helped me at that time as well. And I think sometimes you need to be a bit lucky on your journey that, you know, if you turn up at a club where an owner's making the signings or you're not there, that he's only going to give you half a dozen games to, to, to show what you can do you're probably going to find that it's going to be very difficult to succeed. So maybe a bit lucky at the start, but I, I worried much more when I was younger than I, than I would do now. That success that you want the time to achieve at West Ham, what what is that success? What, what is the goal for West Ham? Uh, if we're sat here in, you know, let's say 10 years, five years time, <laughs> that's too long in football these days, yeah. five years time, what, what's, the, what's the goal? I think we've been successful. Yeah, I think West Ham have been successful in the last two years, and what you, and, and, you know, really the the ones who are the the great winners and the serial winners are the ones who once they get a bit of success, all they want is more of it. Uh, I'd love to be sitting here with and bringing my trophies in here in front of you and putting them up and saying, "Here, look at these trophies. I've not got that. What have I got? I've got periods of success. You know, my teams have done well. We've got to Europe. You know, got to a cup final here and there. We've we've got to semi finals." So not everybody in the industry can have success. You know, not everybody can you know, be walking about with their medals. And at the moment, I'm not. But I still believe there's still a big chance that I can do that. Is that your KPI of success? Is that what you... you uh, no, it... it's probably not now. It's not now because I actually think... Staying in the job wouldn't be a bit... Longevity is a really important thing in, in any work. If you can stay in it and you can... It's no, it's a big thing. It's shown that you've done a good enough job. But you know, I've had a cut. I've been fortunate enough with a few manager of the year awards over over the years. You know, the last few years I've been nominated for it. But I've said many times I'd swap it for one of Josie Mourinho's Slimming medals if I got the chance. You know, or one of his trophies all day long. So that's still got to be what I'm driving to do. Now. Well, I'm not gone forever because I'm getting older and I don't want to be as old as Sir Alex or, or Roy Hodgson when they finish, those sort of people. But but I've still got the energy, I've still got the drive. I feel as if I've got a good team and I feel as if I'm still capable of, of keeping up. Have you done that in the past to make sure the culture is right? And what is that culture? Yeah. Well, I think I think for me, the biggest one was when I, when I was at West Ham the first time we came and we thought we'd done a good job and we kept the team up we were asked to come in we kept the team up and we didn't get the job and then another manager came in and we were we were out of work for a year or so then to be fair to the owner David Sullivan he phoned me a back company says would you come in I says yeah love to come back no problem I felt I had to do a bit more at West Ham or had to try and I, I, I keep using it and I say it openly now I want to build a new West Ham so what does a new West Ham mean? Well, a lot of people, a lot of supporters might not like the thought of that, but West Ham have moved to a new stadium. It's not been it's not been appreciated by everybody, but that's what we're going to be, it looks like, for the next 100 years. That's what it looks like. The club's going to be there. So we need to make the best we possibly can of it. You know, I want to change the cut. I want, to, I want there to be lots of young kids come to West Ham. East End of London's a huge area full of West Ham supporters 
a, a, a lot of poverty in the area. West Ham offer great ticket prices, great opportunities. They do brilliant work in the community of West Ham and in the East End of London. They really do. And I want it to encourage all the young kids. Now, what do you need? You need exciting players so that the young kids want, want to buy a jersey so that they're not following the top two or three teams in the country. And you want them to come. So I've, I've tried to change... I've tried to change the team. But, you know, deep down, I'd really like to say I'm trying to make West Ham better. And it used to always do it. All the people... And I was a manager at Everton. I was manager at Man United and other clubs. Folk would say, ah, oh, you get a flaky West Ham. You know, they're not not that reliable and you don't know what West Ham team's going to turn up. Well, I want to change that culture. There's so much room for improvement at West Ham. You know, I think it's got great potential to improve. And I... I hope that you get I get the opportunity to keep it going. We've had a couple of really, really good years. Uh, success for West Ham. It's been success. And it's how we continue that success now, how we build on it. And I think if you're if you're in business, I think you'll accept it. You know, you quite often you have a couple of years or a good year and then you might not have it quite so good because of what I, we're a little bit like that at the moment. So I'm hoping that culturally, I think we have changed. I think we've changed a load of things at West Ham. We're not we're not milky, we're not flaky. Uh, I think there's a different atmosphere in East End of London regarding how people see West Ham. I I like the way we've done it, but we've also got some exciting, really exciting young players who those young supporters I talked about could follow. What are those next steps then? If you if you reflect back on what you did at Everton, you took them from mm-hmm. being that kind of, you know, happy to survive club to in your last, I think in your last eight years, you finished in the top, you last seven years, you finished in the top, one of the two. Yeah. You last eight years, you finished in the top eight, seven times yeah. or something to, along, mm-hmm. along those lines. Um, they became a, a consistent competitive team at the top, top end of the mm-hmm. table. When you look at where West Ham is now, as we sit here now 16th in the table, mm-hmm. what is, what are those, but after two amazing years in the two mm-hmm. previous years where West Ham were absolutely fireworks, to be fair, mm-hmm. dangerous, very, very, very dangerous team to to play against. I'm not a Manchester United fan, so I remember la- the last two years have been really, really um, incredible yeah. for West Ham. What are those steps forward now to get West Ham to being that team that that is competing at the very top of the table? And mm-hmm. I find it so interesting that in fact, when you, when you answer this question, you don't just think, oh, we need to buy more players. It's kind of more of a, holistic, wider, broader job mm-hmm. that needs to be done. Yeah, I, I I actually think that we've we bought our players and I think that, you know, I've, I've gone out there and said, this is what I'm doing. But I think, I sometimes I think in, in football, not that you need to break it, but we had a really good team for the last two years. But we had a few, Mark Noble was coming to them, one or two other players were coming to them, we had to change and we were actually short in numbers, we were really short. The players have done on... I felt as if I nearly had to break it up a little bit because I had seen signs. Now, my experience, my longevity was telling me, if I don't do this now, then I'm going to feel I'm going to be caught out. Now, we probably didn't do quite as well from January on last year. That was my feeling. We had some brilliant nights. We got to semi-final European football. You know, we'd been challenging all years. I mean, we in the last game of the season, we, we finished seventh but we were 10 minutes away from finishing sixth above Manchester United, you know. Uh, so the, the the margins were incredibly small and all this, but I felt that now with, my, now with the age I'm nearly saying is, I, d- I don't really give a shit now, I've got to say, I'm not going to get many more goes at this. So if I don't make a go at it and I don't really do what I think is right and what I want to do, then I'll regret it. So there's part of me said, yeah, we had to bring in new players and we've gone out and we've, put her head on the block and said, here we go, brought these new players in. Now what I really need is hope that I can get a little bit of time to settle and get them settled in. I think we've brought in good players. I think we have got a better squad. Maybe not a better team at this exact time than what we had last year, but we've definitely got better players, which I, I believe will show that in, in the coming months. If you love the Diary of a CEO brand and you watch this channel, please do me a huge favour, become part of the 15% of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button. It helps us tremendously and the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests.